start. I'm the director of external affairs at Cabot Oil and Gas. And as you've heard, Will said this is going to be interactive. I'm hoping to add a little video component to it. So hopefully that will work and work well. What I'd also like to say is, I want to preach, but I want to say thank you to everyone who's still here. This is a big day uh, in Scranton to see this crowd here listening, taking part in what's going on in the energy industry. So again, I take my hat off to you for taking the time to be here to learn more about what it is we're doing. I'm going to try, if possible, to mix a little bit of gas use, but also with supply chain. Because I think as business owners, the goal is, how does this make sense to you? So if I look forward here, that's my question. Hopefully I'll answer a little bit of this today, but really, here in Northeast Pennsylvania, why do you care? How does it affect you? What are we doing? So hopefully I can uh, provide you some insights as to what you're seeing here. Two things I picked up earlier today, it's not just about activity, it's about achievement. Hopefully I can show you some of the achievements that we talked about. There's a lot going on, and again, we don't want to do it just for the activity. And hopefully I'll also touch upon, you heard about what's important here in Scranton, was meds and eds, and that's what's growing. I will also tell you that I believe that energy is important, but I'll also hopefully show you where education ties into our industry. That'll be my challenge today. Go let me know if I get there. Before I can go there, let me just give you a quick overview of Cabot Oil and Gas. Again, as you can see, we're a company with a 125-year history. We were born in western Pennsylvania. As you heard from Secretary Walker, you know, we moved with the plays. When it was time to go to Houston, we went there. Now we're back. We're producing natural gas here. We made the decision to locate solely in Susquehanna County, about 200,000 acres there. Uh, you heard some folks talk this morning about the shale play. We're excited. We think we're in the sweetest spot in the play. The shale there runs anywhere between 200, 400 feet thick. And that's why we're producing the gas that we are. I think it's important that you understand the production that's there because we'll be here for a long time. It's not just a coming and go. And at the same time, you think about it from a business development standpoint, we think about it from a supply chain. As of last year, just in Susquehanna County, our investment was $2 billion. We'll spend $750 million this year. And again, we want like DTE, we want to find, excuse me, suppliers, vendors locally. We're doing everything we can to make that happen locally. Now again, when you think about it, it's important because you heard earlier about the production side of this. If it's not certain or it's not understood that we're going to be here and the production's going to stay, you're going to get people who might be hesitant. You get an electric company saying, do I want to go with natural gas? Maybe the price that Will talks about, maybe it's going to go up. Are these guys going to be able to deliver? I think as early as we are into the Marcella Shell, we have demonstrated, not just through activity, but through our achievements, that we can deliver. This is the production that you're looking at. These are for the Commonwealth, for the, as we look at it from a Cabot standpoint, as you would see, nine of the top ten wells are Cabot wells just north of here in Susquehanna County. We are producing, on average, one BCF a day. You know, when you think about one BCF, and again, I give this speech at churches, at Rotary, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, the numbers are overwhelming. How do you make sense of it? So our hope <coughs> is to give you an overview of what it means to produce there was a video component not working. What do you mean, Marcus? We're going to try. Going across.
again, activity is critical, but so are achievements. And that's what we have here. We think it's important that we roll this out and we allow local communities, <coughs> again, we have a Pennsylvania-based company, move to Houston, moving back. We want to make sure we're putting people to work locally. Why? Again, look at the long-term benefits of using natural gas. It's easy. You've heard it all today. It cleans the air. you got energy security. I know energy independence would be a nice thing. Let's stick on energy security. Price stability is there. We'll talk about it. When you look at it from a natural gas, even if the price increases, you still have stability in our energy. <coughs> and again, we want to drive that locally. We want to make certain that there's an ability to take advantage of it here. And again, anytime we can reduce ourselves off of that foreign oil and use our own, we're putting more people to work here and utilizing it. That's another goal of ours. So what are we doing to try to lead this effort? And again, you hear a lot about how vehicles are newer to the play. And when I started prior to Cabot, I worked for Columbia Gas, and I had a natural gas vehicle way back in the day. So the technology is not new. But what we're seeing is bringing it here to Northeast PA is new. So in order to do that, Cabot has moved over. We're running all of our vehicles on natural gas. We built our own CNG station in Susquehanna County. And we use local contractors. You heard Lindy talked about earlier. They were critical in the build of that natural gas facility. So again, I, I want to challenge you to think about it from a business standpoint. There's opportunities here. They may not be as obvious as you see them, but really building a CNG plant or a filling station, it's electrical. It's putting all the pieces together. And the skill sets are in this room. It's just making the partnerships and bringing that home. So that's what we're talking about doing. We're looking at our vehicles. As you can see, that wonderful looking gentleman in the middle there, Billy DeRosier, fill up his own vehicle. Bill, thank you very much. But we've also moved on. We don't just do the vehicles. We're using our natural gas drilling, or excuse me, we're using our drilling rigs. We're running them on natural gas. Our light stands on natural gas. These are the ways in which we want to showcase how natural gas can be utilized, in what processes it can be utilized, and more importantly, can we locally secure that equipment? Can we locally secure the manpower to fix it? to sell it. That's again a big challenge of ours. So now this is what we're doing, but it's fascinating because I started again with Columbia Gas in western Pennsylvania and have always had natural gas service. When I moved to work in Susquehanna County, it struck me that there wasn't a utility service there. None. Home heating oil, propane, or wood is what they burn in Susquehanna County. And now, with the Marcella Shell, the sustainable nature of what we're bringing there is we're expanding it into the community. Top left-hand side, Penzi Supply, out of Montrose, is burning natural gas. We're consuming their product as asphalt. They're consuming our product as natural gas. It's a win-win. That's the kind of pluses we want to create locally. Again. The hospital that's being built, you heard about how combined heat and cycle power could be utilized. We're building a new hospital in Susquehanna County, and it will burn natural gas. Now that one will be new. You also heard, if we don't go new and it's existing, maybe I put a turbine on side, maybe I put a generator on side, maybe I gotta go combine heat power. That's the other opportunity we have here to bring that technology to the University of Scranton, to Marywood, to Kings. That's what we want to do. What are those opportunities that are out there? So again, let's see if this works this time. <coughs> the real big reason is it's all about the money. It makes dollars and cents to run a car on compressed natural gas. I'd much rather buy fuel at $1.20 a gallon, a fuel that burns cleaner, Fuel is better for the environment, fuel is better for my cars, and uh, fuel is better for my pocketbook. The whole car of compressed natural gas is, uh, is interesting to me, I guess, for several reasons. When you convert a car with a CNG, 
without putting out half of the uh, movies that you used to be putting out, engines that are powered by compressed natural gas uh, run a lot better, a lot quieter, and the car just likes running on natural gas as opposed to gasoline. It makes me feel good about what I did. I'm Mike Felace, and I'm happy to say that my car runs on homegrown compressed natural gas. Chevy and converted it over. The best part about it is he also is in the school district and he's teaching others how to utilize the technology. He's showcasing it himself. He goes, he'll be at the Scranton uh, School for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing in two weeks uh, with, the, with the vehicle showcasing it because he understands that that's what we need to get to. We need to make it attractive so folks like yourself visit, figure out your business opportunities is also a way to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Why do you want to reduce your dependence? Look at this. Look at the savings you've already seen it today. We've covered these a different uh, couple times. In marketing, it's say it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. And that's what we're trying to get to here. It bottom line saves you dollars. Look at these numbers. You know, you saw nationally 10%. When I mean, you look at what we're looking at in Pennsylvania, 42, 41% over the last three years. It's a thousand dollars a year saved by utilizing natural gas. It's knocking down not just your natural gas bill, it's also knocking down your electric bill. These are the benefits. Again, when I think about UGI and what they're doing and converting the companies that they are, if I was skilled with my hands, I can't even operate a computer, as you can see. But think about the HVAC opportunities that are in this. I mean, that's what's happening. Companies are converting businesses over. That's a real chance to get into this business and figure out what your niche is. It. And again, I hope to show you that the gas is going to be here for a long time. We see ourselves drilling for decades. We see our wells producing for generations. This isn't going to go away. This is here. It's here to stay. And it's important that we all take advantage of it. Because this, to me, is the best piece of sustainableness that we could have. It's really not about what we're doing just today. It's with the likes of Keystone. I know they're here today. It's with the likes of Lackawanna College. I know they're here today. A whole campus at Lackawanna focused on this. These are the opportunities that I see are not for me. But I have three daughters at home. It's that generation and theirs after that will have the opportunity. So this is where I think natural gas use moves into supply chain and education because these schools are moving to create curriculum that we're helping them design. Johnson College has an entire program set for diesel <coughs> mechanics. They have reached out to us. We are working with Johnson College to ensure that they have a natural gas mechanics program because that's where we're going. All of our light stands are going to need to be repaired. All of our vehicles are going to need, need to be maintained. Who's going to do that for us? When you think about the combined heat and power that's out there, who's going to make certain that Tyler Hospital is easily converted over to natural gas? It's the next generation. That's what's nice about Kings and Misericordia. The opportunities that they have in this play are substantial. Again, as a recap, you've heard this all today. I'll leave you with this. Very simple. It's savings. It's an opportunity for the future. It's not just about today as it is that future. It's the jobs will be created. It's the wealth that will be created. I can't say enough about it. I hope that you will be as excited as Will is, as I am, as the rest of the panelists are today. Because again, it's a true opportunity to use our fuels to put EPA to work. Do it locally. Thank you.